Thank you. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here today. Um, as the previous uh, speakers have said, the last uh, few years, um, particularly since the 2011 budget, has seen unprecedented um, change in the UK's oil and gas fiscal system. I, I think it's probably true to say that they've impacted Enquest at least as much as any other company, um, perhaps even more so. Um, Enquest was a uh, IPO'd, we IPO'd in uh, April 2010, and we're uh, currently devoted to the UK, 100% of our assets uh, in the UK. So obviously we take a very, very keen interest in, uh, in the fiscal system. Um, so what I thought I'd do is just start by um, laying out what Enquest's trying to do, and then you can see uh, why changes in the fiscal system have had a, a big impact. So, so we set out with Enquest um, to create a company that was the right fit, as we saw it, um, for current times in the UK North Sea. Focused on UK oil, um, targeting maturing assets and undeveloped smaller oil fields. Um, control through operatorship and high working interests. Um, low decommissioning exposure was our, one of our objectives as well. And, and we really focus on our skills and execution in uh, innovative developments um, through our development teams. So we IPO'd in April 2010, um, went straight into the FTSE 250. We have a current market cap of 1.5 billion. Um, but as I said, we're sort of designed to be you know, the, the right size for the next phase of the North Sea. Um, and so as the uh, opportunities in the UK North Sea are tending to mature, then they get smaller. Um, so opportunities left in maturing fields um, tend to be uh, a lot smaller than they were when the fields were originally found. Um, and, oh, thank you. Oops. Thank you. Um, so, so Enquest um, came out, we came out with about 80 million uh, barrels of uh, reserves. At the end of 2011, we're 115 million barrels. So, so when you're looking at 10 or 20 million barrel opportunities, um, they're very, very interesting to Enquest. They're very material, whereas they wouldn't be to, um, to larger companies. Our main assets at the moment uh, we're producing and we operate uh, and produce um, from six fields. Um, the Dons fields, Thistle, Deveron, Heather and Broome up in the northern North Sea. Um, we've recently um, sanctioned the Alma Galea project, and I'll come on to that in a minute. That's one of our uh, case studies for the fiscal system. And also, um, earlier this year, uh, we acquired a 60% interest in the Kraken heavy oil field, um, which is also impacted by um, the special field allowances. And I'll, I'll come on and talk about those. Um, I think as uh, Mike, um, Mike has said, um, it's quite challenging times in the uh, UK environment at the moment. Um, decline rates, uh, I think 19% uh, recently. Um, and the 2011 budget, uh, increasing tax rates. When you look at the chart on the top right there, um, every previous uh, increase in tax rates has, after a short period of time, resulted in lower investment, notwithstanding increasing oil prices. Um, so without further action, it's very likely, I think, that the 2011 budget increase in special corporation tax would have resulted in, in a decrease in, in investment, uh, which is not the sort of thing that the UK wants at the moment uh, when, uh, you know, when there's lots of aspirations for growth. Um, other impacts of the declining production, um, you can see in the bottom left, um, quite a lot of companies are um, seeing very significant declines in their production rate. And on the bottom right, you can see that the uh, positive balance of payments in the, um, for oil in the early 2000s is now moving to be more and more negative. So really, I mean, the UK, UK PLC needs, um, you know, the uh, maximum amount of capital investment it can into the oil and gas industry. 
Um, I, I can remember the day of the 2011 budget. So Enquest had been uh, IPO'd in April 2010, um, started building our business, um, but, but by their nature, projects you know, that haven't yet been done tend to have marginal economics. And as a new start company, we were recruiting staff to try and uh, get these various projects going. And then I, actually I was climbing up the steps to a plane in Aberdeen and I read on my Blackberry um, the budget. And you know, my sort of immediate thoughts were about you know, these projects we were trying to get going, the people we were trying to hire to uh, get the projects going. So you know, it was quite a significant and uh, quite a damaging day actually for uh, Enquest as it was getting started. And as I say on this chart, um, you know, by definition, unsanctioned projects tend to have uh, marginal economics. So an increase in the tax rate is not what you want to see. And in fact, for a number of our projects, which I'll come on and discuss here, um, the 2011 budget actually made them sub-commercial, um, causing additional challenges. Um, by making uh, projects sub-commercial, then you reduce potential investment, jobs, and future tax receipts. But I think, as Mike touch, touched on, um, there's a real uh, silver lining in the 2011 uh, budget impacts, I think, because I think we've now had a really almost unprecedented level of dialogue between industry and all levels of government, um, which I think has resulted in you know, a number of steps that we're discussing here with the various field allowances, you know, which are very beneficial for a future investment in the industry and future tax receipts. Um, so this has led to the recent introduction of uh, various improved and new allowances. And these allowances, as I'll show in the, these case studies, um, partially uh, mitigate the impact of the increased special corporation tax. So I, I first want to uh, talk about Alma Galea. Um, this is the, actually the second redevelopment of the Argyle and Duncan fields. Argyle was the first oil field uh, on production in the UK North Sea. Um, and this was a project we were trying to get going um, at the time of the 2011 budget. Um, if you look on the right here, these bars are um, relative size of MPV of the project. So prior to the 2011 budget, um, this was already a marginal project and you can see uh, where the bar sits there under 20% uh, uh, SCT and old uh, small field allowance. The impact of the budget took about 20% off the value of that field development, you know, and caused us to have to do quite a lot of uh, rethinking um, and also to start uh, lobbying, in fact, for um, improved small field allowance. And you can see that as you move um, to incorporate the new small field allowance, then a fair bit of the value that was knocked off by the increase in the uh, special corporation tax rate is replaced. And that's actually allowed us um, to go ahead and sanction this large project. This is a, a $1 billion project um, with uh, a subsea system tied back to uh, um, uh, FPSO with uh, tanker offloading. So this project's now underway. Um, we're on track for first oil in the fourth quarter of 2013, um, and our drilling results to date um, are quite good. So that's very pleasing. Now, uh, another consequence of the 2011 budget was that at that time we were talking with um, Kufpec. Um, who are an arm of Kuwait uh, National Oil Company, um, about investing in Alma and Galia. Um, and the 2011 budget um, just put those discussions completely on ice. Um, but following um, the new small field allowance announced um, earlier this year, we managed to uh, reinvigorate those uh, negotiations. And you can see the happy picture here um, where we're signing um, between Enquest and Kufpec, um, 
under the watchful eye of the Chief Secretary of the Treasury. So, I, you know, so this is $500 million of inbound investment coming into the UK from a blue chip investor um, as a result of the change in the uh, recent changes in the fiscal system. I just want to touch on um, the ultra heavy oil allowance. Now, um, so as I said at the beginning, earlier on this year, Enquest um, acquired a 60% uh, interest in the Kraken um, heavy oil field. Um, and the only point I want to make uh, here um, is that the ultra heavy oil allowance does have a significant impact on viability of uh, heavy oil fields. Um, and you can see with the MPV uh, bars on the right um, that the uh, heavy oil allowance uh, ups the value by about 40%, um, making development of heavy oil fields um, viable um, where they were not viable uh, before. And as a consequence, um, fields like Kraken um, are now being uh, moved towards uh, sanction. In fact, on Kraken, we're aiming for sanction in the first half of 2013. And that's just a schematic to show this is a big development. It's, it's a field of somewhere between 100 and 160 million barrels, um, some 25 wells, and a big uh, FPSO and shuttle tanker offloading. Moving on now to the Brownfield Allowance, um, which was recently announced by the Chancellor. Um, and the case study I'm showing here is the Thistle Field, um, where Enquest and its predecessor companies have been engaged in starting um, redevelopment of the field. Um, you can see with the stacked uh, the bars for the MPV there on the right, that prior to the 2011 budget, um, that was the uh, MPV of this uh, development, and it was uh, severely impact by, impacted by the increase in special corporation tax. But now we're pleased to say that with the recently announced Brownfield Allowance, which applies to uh, Thistle, um, most of the value, and this was a marginal project to start with, has been put back. Um, and now we are able to move towards sanctioning the next stage of the Thistle uh, redevelopment. Um, I'm a, I've spent in my uh, previous job with Talisman and now with Enquest a lot of time looking at redevelopment of mature fields. I'm getting uh, told to wind up here. Um, and you can see on this chart here um, the increased production that you can get from uh, redeveloping a mature field. So Thistle was headed towards uh, decommissioning in 2008. And now with new seismic, um, successful redevelopment drilling, and now um, a project to extend its life for another 25 years, um, it's adding some 40 million barrels of uh, new reserves. Um, so the project that's now uh, brought to life by the Brownfield Allowance uh, will bring a new uh, power and uh, power project to Thistle, um, new top sides, a process simplification project, um, jacket integrity, and a new control system, um, which will give, as I said, Thistle another 25 years of life. Um, I just wanted to make uh, Michael touched on uh, uh, certainty on decommissioning tax relief. I think this is a fundamentally important thing, um, not only to get certainty in the tax relief, but this will open up um, the transfer of maturing assets from bigger companies to smaller companies, um, because there won't be such a large requirement for financial security um, from the larger company transferring to the smaller company. So I, I think that will really invigorate the uh, A&D market in the, in the UK North Sea. So I think, um, I believe there's a very long-term future for UK North Sea oil and gas. Um, I think it will be helped by moving maturing assets from the larger companies to smaller companies who will be more willing to invest in the smaller opportunities. And I'm also delighted with the level of consultation now between industry and government and the much greater 
uh, level of understanding, I think, there is on uh, both sides. And I think that consultation has to continue you know, at a high level, actually, for the rest of the life of the basin. And finally, um, I say that no barrels should be left in the ground due to fiscal circumstances. And between all stakeholders of the UK North Sea, it's our job to make sure that that doesn't happen. Thank you.